In the fog-laden village of Briar Glen, Mark discovers villagers with hollow eyes and eerie smiles, realizing too late that he's trapped in a cursed realm, hunted by the dead. Mark's car rattled down the narrow dirt road, fog swirling around him like a living thing. The sun had set, leaving the world cloaked in darkness. Hours had passed since he lost signal and any semblance of civilization, and the isolation gnawed at him. Just as he considered turning back, a flicker of light broke through the mist. He slowed as the headlights illuminated a weathered wooden sign swaying in the breeze. Briar Glen. Hope flickered within him. He had been driving aimlessly since his GPS failed, and the prospect of a village was a welcome sight. The village sat nestled in a valley surrounded by dense forest. It looked peaceful, if eerie. Lanterns flickered in the windows, casting a warm glow that seemed inviting after hours of dark, fog-covered roads. Mark parked on the edge of the village and stepped out, taking in the cobbled street. A strange stillness hung in the air, no wind, no sounds, just an unsettling silence. As he wandered further into Briar Glen, he noticed figures on the streets. They moved slowly, expressions blank, and their clothes seemed old-fashioned. A man sweeping his porch glanced at him, but his eyes held no life. Nearby, children ran past, their laughter sharp and hollow. Mark's instinct screamed at him that something was wrong. He approached a woman in a black dress. Excuse me, can you tell me where I am? She paused, her gaze distant. Briar Glen, she whispered, her voice dry like rustling leaves. Is there a place I can stay? Mark asked, unease creeping in. The woman turned and walked away without answering. Mark hurried toward the center of town, hoping to find clarity. The village square appeared, dominated by a crumbling church. Its bell tower loomed over darkened houses, casting long shadows across the square. A dry fountain sat in the center, covered in moss and cracks. Suddenly, he saw figures standing rigidly around the square, their backs to him. At first, they seemed like villagers, but something was off. As he approached, their heads slowly turned and Mark's blood ran cold. Their faces were pale, distorted, their eyes sunken. Mouths twisted into grotesque smiles that didn't reach their hollow eyes. Mark stumbled back, horror surging within him. As he turned to run, the church bell tolled a deep, mournful sound that echoed through the air. The figure's smiles widened, their heads cocked unnaturally to the side as they began to shuffle toward him. Panic surged through Mark as he sprinted through narrow streets, breath coming in ragged gasps. But no matter which way he turned, the village twisted around him, trapping him in a maze. Every street led him back to the square. He ran until his legs burned, but the fog thickened, obscuring his vision. The figures were closer now, their movements deliberate, their smiles never faltering. Desperate, Mark ducked into a narrow alley between two decaying buildings. The alley opened into a small clearing behind the village, but what greeted him stole the breath from his lungs. Rows of graves stretched out before him, each marked by a weathered stone. The names on the gravestone sent chills down his spine. They were the same as the villagers he had just seen. Mark's heart raced as he realized the truth. Briar Glen wasn't a living village. It had been abandoned long ago, its residents long dead. The people he had seen were no longer human if they had ever been. A soft, ancient whisper came from behind him. You've seen too much. Mark spun around, but the alley had vanished, swallowed by the fog. The mist thickened pressing in on him, swirling into strange shapes that twisted and writhed. He could hear voices now, cold and whispering, pulling him closer. The villagers emerged from the fog, their faces no longer pretending to be human. Their features twisted into something monstrous, their eyes glowing with a sick, hungry light. You are one of us now, they whispered, their voices blending into an eerie, echoing chant. Mark tried to back away, but the ground beneath him shifted, as though the earth itself was swallowing him whole. He felt the weight of the fog pressing down on him, suffocating him. 
His vision blurred as the villagers closed in, their hollow smiles growing wider with every step they took. The fog swirled tighter, pulling him down into the cold earth. Mark's heart raced, but there was no escape. The last thing he saw were the villagers, their twisted faces staring down at him as he was consumed by the fog, their voices whispering in his ears. And then, silence. Briar Glen remained shrouded in mist, its cursed villagers waiting for the next lost soul to stumble upon their forgotten home. They always did. A family's fresh start turns into a nightmare when their son finds a haunted doll. The ghost of a tragic little girl won't rest until she has him forever. Emily and David move to the countryside with their seven-year-old son, Ben, to start fresh. The house they bought was a sprawling old Victorian, beautiful but in need of some care. Emily felt uneasy from the moment they arrived. The house seemed alive with creaks and groans as though it remembered every family that had lived there before them. One afternoon while unpacking, Ben asked if he could explore the attic. Go ahead, Emily said, though something about the attic always made her uncomfortable. A short while later, Ben returned, holding a dusty porcelain doll. It had curly dark hair, a faded blue dress, and cracked cheeks. Look what I found, Ben beamed. Her name is Lily. The doll unsettled Emily, though she couldn't say why. That's a funny name for a doll, she said lightly. But from that day, strange things began to happen. Ben became more attached to the doll than Emily liked. He talked to it constantly, whispering as if it could respond. One night, when Emily was tucking him into bed, Ben said, Lily says she used to live here. She says she wants me to stay. Emily's heart skipped a beat. It's just a doll, Ben, she said, forcing a smile. But Ben insisted, no, she's real, Mom, Lily told me. As days passed, the atmosphere in the house grew heavy. Emily started hearing footsteps when she was alone, and cold drafts would rush through the rooms no matter how many windows they shut. The worst was the faint sound of a little girl's laughter coming from the attic. At night, Emily dreamed of a girl standing at the foot of her bed, whispering, She's mine now. Then one evening, Emily found Ben in the attic, staring out the small window. His voice was a soft murmur. It's my turn, he whispered. Emily pulled him away from the window, her pulse racing. That night, she knew they had to leave the house. The next morning, Emily decided to research the house's history. What she found horrified her. Years ago, a family had lived there with their young daughter, Lily. One stormy night, Lily went to the attic to find her favorite doll. She leaned too far out of the window and fell to her death. Her body was found the next morning, cradling the same doll Ben had found. Since then, the house had a dark reputation. Families who moved in reported strange sounds, cold spots, and always, always children becoming obsessed with the doll. No one had ever stayed long. Terrified, Emily knew she had to act. She sought out a local medium, an elderly woman named Mrs. Daniels. The medium confirmed what Emily feared. Lily's spirit was trapped in the doll, seeking to reclaim her life through Ben. You must destroy the doll to break Lily's hold, Mrs. Daniels said, but she won't go easily. That night, Emily and David prepared to confront the spirit. They took the doll to the backyard and lit a fire. As Emily approached the flames with the doll, a cold wind howled through the yard, snuffing out the fire. The air grew thick, and a ghostly figure appeared, the small, pale figure of Lily, her eyes wide with anger and longing. She's mine, Lily shrieked, her voice piercing through the night. The temperature plummeted and objects in the yard began to fly as though an invisible force was lashing out. Emily stood firm, holding the doll tight. You can't have him, Lily, she shouted, her voice breaking. Take me instead. For a moment, the ghost hesitated, staring at Emily with cold, sad eyes. Then with a heart-wrenching scream, the ghost dissolved into the air. The doll burst into flames, burning to ash in Emily's hands. The wind stopped and the night went silent. Ben blinked, looking up at his mother as if waking from a dream. What happened, he asked, his voice small and unsure. 
Emily knelt and pulled him close. It's over now, Ben. It's all over. In the following days, the house seemed lighter. The oppressive atmosphere lifted. There were no more whispers, no more footsteps in the night. The family packed their things, ready to leave the house behind for good. But on the last day, as Emily was packing the final box, she found a note on her bed. The writing was in a child's scrawl. I'll always be here. Chills ran down her spine as she realized that though the doll was gone, Lily might never truly leave. Thanks for diving into the shadows with us. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more spine-chilling tales. Stay curious, stay safe, and remember, sometimes the truth is scarier than fiction. Until next time, sleep tight if you can.